You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on EU sustainability criteria for bioenergy. Bioenergy, which is generally produced from plants or trees, is a renewable energy source. But generating and using bioenergy has environmental impacts and its benefits are not always that clear. So the European Commission is pushing for tighter sustainability criteria to ensure that using biofuels and biomass leads to real carbon savings. Want to hear the story? Stay with us. The word bioenergy has become part of our everyday language. But what is it exactly? Well, bioenergy comes in many shapes and forms, but essentially it's a renewable energy source derived from biological sources, mainly forests, agricultural crops and waste. So wood and other solid biomass can be used to produce heat and electricity and liquid biofuels derived from food or feed crops can be used to power our city buses. That's why it's such an important part of the EU's renewable energy mix. Indeed, in 2015, it accounted for over 60% of the EU's renewable energy production and it's taking an increasingly large share of the market. But how sustainable is bioenergy really? While it produces the same amount of carbon dioxide as traditional fossil fuels, it's considered climate friendly because the carbon emitted during combustion was removed from the atmosphere during the growth of the biomass by the process of photosynthesis. So by planting new plants, we can keep the process almost carbon neutral. That's right. Almost, but not 100%. As all other energy sources, the production and use of bioenergy has environmental and socio-economic impacts. Take land use change, for example. When land is converted into agricultural land to grow bioenergy crops, it can lead to a loss of biodiversity and changes in its greenhouse gas emissions. Another problem is the so-called carbon debt, as burning biomass releases carbon dioxide instantly, while repaying that carbon debt through new tree growth may take hundreds of years. At a socio-economic level, increased demand from biofuel producers for agricultural crops can create new jobs and growth in rural areas, but it could be a double-edged sword, leading to a rise in food prices and contributing to negative practices such as land grabbing in developing countries. So how do we square this circle? An option could be to follow the Commission's proposal for stricter sustainability criteria for the production of biofuels and biomass. But let's first see how it works now. The EU has decided that by 2020, 20% of its energy consumption must come from renewable energy sources and at least 10% of the energy to power transport. The current Renewable Energy Directive sets sustainability and greenhouse gas saving criteria for biofuels and bioliquids, but not for biomass fuels, which come mainly from forestry, an area that falls under the competence of member states. So what are the main criteria for biofuels? To be considered sustainable, biofuels must achieve greenhouse gas savings of at least 35% in comparison to fossil fuels. This rises to 50% in 2017 and to 60% in 2018, though only for new production plants. All life cycle emissions are taken into account when calculating greenhouse gas savings, including emissions from cultivation, processing and transport. Other requirements are that biofuels cannot be grown in areas converted from land with previously high carbon stock, such as wetlands or forests, and they cannot be produced from raw materials obtained from land with high biodiversity, such as primary forests or highly biodiverse grasslands. The Commission also made recommendations for forest biomass, but these have not really been applied by Member States. So in 2016, the Commission proposed a recast of the Renewable Energy Directive. The recast sets a binding target of 27% of renewable energy sources by 2030, substituting the binding national targets of the existing Renewable Energy Directive. It also beefs up the existing criteria for bioenergy sustainability, extending them to cover biomass and biogas for heat and power too. The directive includes four main new requirements. Firstly, the sustainability criteria for biofuels are improved, including by requiring that new advanced biofuels emit at least 70% less greenhouse gases than fossil fuels. Secondly, a new sustainability criterion on forest biomass is introduced to ensure that the production of wood fuel continues to be sustainable and that any land use, land use change and forestry emissions are accounted for. The new sustainability criteria would be extended to cover solid biomass and biogas used in large heat and power plants as well. Electricity from biomass fuels produced in installations with a fuel capacity of at least 20 megawatts would have to be produced with high-efficiency cogeneration technology. 
The new directive requires member states to increase the share of renewable energy supplied for heating and cooling by at least one percentage point every year. Regarding the transport sector, member states would need to ask their fuel suppliers to include a minimum share of energy derived from renewable sources such as advanced biofuels and renewable electricity. At the same time, the role of food-based biofuels in transport, countable towards the 27% renewable energy target, should decline over time, down to 3.8% in 2030. So how has the proposal been received by stakeholders and institutional actors? The European Parliament supports sustainability criteria for bioenergy and highlighted the sustainability issues of forest biomass in a resolution on renewable energy. In another resolution on palm oil and deforestation of rainforests, MEPs called for effective sustainability criteria in EU biofuels policy that protect land of high biodiversity value, high carbon stocks and peatland, and that includes social criteria. They also called for new measures to phase out vegetable oils that drive deforestation as a component of biofuels, preferably by 2020. Among stakeholders, reactions to the Commission's proposal have been rather mixed. While environmental NGOs called for stricter criteria, the bioenergy industries warned that tighter limits on conventional biofuels hinder the decarbonisation of the transport sector. Finally, farmers and forest owners also expressed concern about adding economic and administrative burdens and stressed the principle of subsidiarity in forest policies. You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts.